For some, this might look like an absolute epic weekend or your own personal hell, but I'm going to show you the absolute carnage that happened this weekend. So, went out to the Desert 100 event. So that weekend, I brought out both T-dubs. I have the 1987 T-dub I call the Boogie Bomb and then the classic Turd Wagon. So, it was getting kind of late and it was time to set up my tent in the dark again, unfortunately. Finding an ideal camping spot too was also a challenge because all of this is volcanic rock out here and it's very hard ground and there is no windbreaks whatsoever out here. Now that we're all set up, go check out the beer tent and report back to the tent and chill for the night. I'm taking this T-dub so my phone can charge up a little bit. This one's got the wireless phone charger. There's T-dubs. Got two T-dubs behind me. I like your T-dubs. <laughs> Y'all doing a dual, dual sport poker run or? I'm doing the Palmer run. Oh, okay. Remember they used to use that at the mile we're racing on our big bike. Yeah. Just a play date. Nice. I like that rack. That's nice. Yeah, cool. That's I don't mean to hold you up. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I wish I had my phone set up on my on the boogie bomb because I kind of wanted to do the poker run on it today, but. I'll take it around, I'll do a little practice and stuff later on. It's totally just me out here right now. There's, I think, onesie twosies like a mile or so ahead of me, but it kind of feels good to just be by myself because camping in such close quarters like that, you don't really get a lot of privacy. <laughs> but um, I'm not the best rider out there. I'm just doing this to have fun, so try to conserve my energy for later on too um yeah it's out here having fun that's what it's all about so the course i was doing it was the adventure slash dual sport poker run and it wasn't just all single track and trails there was a little bit of road he had to cover too and i honestly didn't mind it was a good 50 50 but you just got to cruise these back farm roads and it was pretty fun so the t-dub is horrendously slow especially if you have a headwind coming right at you but i was just kind of leapfrogging with this group and they would pass me on the straightaways, but when they would take a break or get on the single track, that's when I'd catch up to them. Uh, try to get around this group, but I'm in, no, I'm in no rush. I'm just chilling. I'm not really a big fan of riding of a lot of people, but this is, I gotta start, maybe I should start doing more of these things because sometimes riding alone, I'll, I live alone, I have no kids, and sometimes it's just nice to interact with other people, so I'm a huge introvert, but that little 10% window, I actually want to interact with people. So later this year in September, I know, I know Mob Street, he's putting out the, he wants to do the first annual T-Dub Fest. I, I know he tried to do it last year, he had a, he had a bail out last minute, it's all, all good, but I'd like to... I like to meet up with him, and that'd be cool if T Dub's kid could go. That oh my god, that'd be that would, <laughs> all the all the T Dubbers that's out there. That'd be so fun. But um, I'm gonna try to take vacation for it. Can't make any guarantees. I might be on, might be out somewhere for work or whatever. But um, who knows if if it lines up in my schedule. I'm definitely gonna take that time off to do that that'd be really cool i do want to meet all these guys it'd be a good time second part here black rock trail okay my bike's not starting there we go oh that's weird put it in neutral put it on the kickstand and it just boom, died right out Maybe you gotta just flood it out because it sat out in a weird angle. That's probably what it was. Dunkel Trail. All right. And there ain't really a whole lot out here. <laughs> it's very uh, desolate. I remember the last Desert 100 I did. Me and my buddy Dwayne did. He had the DR350. He had the XR, of course. And um, we barely managed to do one lap of it. Back in the day, like, we weren't really that good at riding. I'm still not the best rider out there. Like, I'm got I'm seasoned for sure after being in the desert. But, um, anyways, yeah, after one lap, we were just 
men physically and mentally just destroyed. <laughs> like, as soon as we completed the one lap, like, they're like, all right, that's one lap. And, like, we just looked at each other and, like, we're like, yeah, we're good. Like, we were so tired, like, we couldn't even walk the next day. Every time we move, we're just, like, growling. It's like, oh! Uh, was, hopefully I'm not like that tomorrow, but I feel like I'll be fine. I just got to focus on, like, where I am at the moment and, like, don't don't focus on, like, how much distance I have in front of me, then I'll, I'll be okay. So as of now, there's, like, four other T-dubs here. I mean, just if I never bought a T-dub, like, where, like, what would I would have had? Actually... If I never bought a T-Dub, I probably would have gone with the KOX 230 because it's the same MSRP as a T-Dub and they had a lot more features compared to the T-Dub. Yeah, so long story short, I first discovered a T-Dub when I was doing the motorcycle safety course and um, they had a loaner T-Dub there and a bunch of little cruisers and stuff and this Marine was just having the time of his life on this little stupid bike and I'm like what is this thing it's just got these big tires and it's like something like right up my alley too it's like something I it's like, it's like it's like an older bike I had when I was a kid just like that style it's like an older enduro from the 70s or 80s so I went home and gone down that rabbit hole and lo and behold we find T-Dub's kid and stuff and I think Bob Street back then was still like pretty relatively a new channel, so bonds between their two channels and stuff, and uh, uh, T Dub Club and Till Death Do a Sport, those old crusty bastards, watching those guys too. Long story short, got the T Dub. Now I got my second T Dub, so I love these bikes, man. They're just they're awesome. I'll never not have a T Dub in my garage. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. Is that a 90? Uh, is that a 1990 T-Dub? Oh, 89. I have an 87 back in my truck, too. Yeah. They're fun bikes. I love them. <laughs> have a good one. We back. Okay. I thought I had like so much more to go, but we are totally back. I think old T Dub still in the strong. Not with the original engine, of course, but <laughs> biggest mistake I made with this thing, long story short, is just slow down with this thing. Don't try to go wide open for hundreds of miles in the desert heat where it's 120 degrees. That's the worst thing for an air-cooled bike for sure. And that's what I did. That's what killed the first engine. Luckily, parts are relatively cheap, even though I did dish out like probably close to eight, 900 bucks to get new parts and stuff. Luckily, I know people too. I sent it home to my dad and his neighbor across the way has a really nice garage that they can really do any type of maintenance over there. I don't have that luxury, so I sent it home in a Walmart cooler. Two months go by and they send it back and broke it in. Now we're, long story short, short we're here. That was all in like 2021 time frame. So two years ago now. Cows. These cows look, look lazy. That one looks so mad that I'm interrupting to sleep. I like this. Honestly, I think this is more enjoyable compared to the actual Desert 100 Grace. Because that one you have like, you're literally four deep, like side by side, rolling into a corner. And it's kind of stressful, <laughs> but we're doing it, so. Yep. Oh no. <laughs> that just happened to me a couple weekends ago. <laughs> Oh, you at least you got some of the lever you can kind of shift off of. Oopsie. I have a KL, I have the KLX 300. I love that bike. Yeah, this is the same bike as the worst suspension. <laughs> and a little bit lighter. Not much though. Yeah, that's cool. 300. Bonded 300. 
Oh, okay. If you want to use this, you can bend it back a little bit. There you go. Give you something to go off of, I guess. Looking at that shifter, I'm like, man, that's got plenty of life left. <laughs> oh, he went down. Y'all good, man? <laughs> yep, I'll give you a hand. I don't know who these people are, but they seem nice. So after a couple hours of riding, we all ended up in Odessa. I seen some unfamiliar faces, but some familiar bikes. So we got some gas, and then it was time to mess around at the camp again. I didn't get time to hook up my mic. I just have to record this absolute fuckery that's going on over here. Oh, <laughs> Here he goes. I love your ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that concludes day one or saturday of the desert 100 so as you see in the background there is hundreds upon thousands of people here just camping the next day was absolute carnage stay tuned for the next video and once again y'all have a good one